Welcome in to the Post Oak Little League Junior Championship. We have the Junior White Sox versus the Junior Cubs today. Kyle Harris on the call here with Brian Adams. Brian, how are you doing today? Pretty good, man. Hot day here. This is kind of the big day for uh, Post Oak. For a lot of these kids, this is the last time they'll ever play baseball, but uh, it's definitely the last time they'll play at Post Oak, which is uh, a really special place. They, most of these kids just had what they called a, a hat ceremony. So here we go. Absolutely looking forward to it. On the mound today, it's going to be the pitcher, Braden Johnson. First pitch into Johansson. Miles Camardi. Braden Johansson. Braden, Braden, Braden Johansson, excuse me. Johansson. Braden, this is his first year at Post Oak, actually. He was an SBMSA kid. Um, from the pride of Sweden, his parents were. And uh, he's a really great player. He'll probably go to... Uh, They'll have two pitchers. So Braden will pitch first, and then they'll go to the shortstop, Kalino Lahan. Yeah, both. Yeah, they both pitched on um, on Wednesday as well, I yeah. believe, against the Braves and your son Bennett Adams. Yeah, it was the, Joe Hanson and Adams on the mound to start that game. Correct. And the Cubs, uh, they got two rock stars too, um, and. Uh, we got a little. We got a. We got a walk on the first yep. here. Yep. Cubs are going to be let off. Miles Camarda are going to go ahead and trot down to first base with the first walk of the game. For they Brady call him Big Country. Big Country. They call him Big Country. So there he is now coming up to the plate for the Cubs. The catcher Wyatt Baskin. Wyatt actually. Uh, Wyatt comes from a long family history of baseball. His dad actually played at uh, the University of Texas. Was a pitcher. His grandparents actually don't miss a game. His grandmother actually scores every game by hand. Well, how about that? And Kurt is off. Yeah, his older brother is uh, his older brother is Jake Baskin. He's a great player. Two younger kids. Uh, Wyatt actually took a little time off from Post Oak, but uh, as as I was once told, you know, God touched him. He's a great little player. He's got a great. They're a great family. Another pickoff attempt from Joe Hansen. Camarda slides back in safely. On the outfield behind Joe Hansen, behind the plate, catcher Patrick Fowler. On the infield over first base, Owen Smith. Second base, John Dominguez. Shortstop, Kalino Lejon. And at third base, Bryson Knowles. BK is his name. BK actually, uh, BK's been out here for eight years. He actually got to play whatever they hear, the Pee Wees, which is the machine pitch. He played for three years. So uh, he's probably one of the longest players to ever play at Post Oak history. Wow, homegrown. Homegrown is right, great parents. So we see Joe Hansen still looking at Camardo over there first base, a lot of pickoff attempts. In the outfield for the White Sox, over and left is gonna be Will Landers, over in center field, Thomas Gillenshaw, and over in right, Kyle Economitz. Economides. 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 It's a tough one there. As yeah, it is. Camarda's off the throw from Fowler, ooh, 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 and he's ooh. safe. As Camarda gets right under that slide from Lehan, the shortstop. Patrick Fowler's a great, great player here, um, and uh, Lehan is just a uh, all-around athlete. He's going to be a rock star as he continues to move up in high school. So for a lot of these kids, this is the last time they'll play Little League Baseball. Um, you know, Post Oak's special because uh, at this level, they'll let them have open bases. But Little League is Little League Baseball is kind of far and few between nowadays. It's a community thing. And, you know, my younger son is uh, my middle one. He's on the 12-year-old. And that's the year that they try to go to Little League World Series. And, you know, most of the kids, you know, you're the Mike Trouts of the world. And, those kids, they all play select baseball. Yes, in the fall. And uh, no, all year round. Well, yeah, yeah. So it's it's kind of a different thing. So the only really way you have community baseball in little league is uh, is the community supports it. So you know, Post Oak has an unbelievable fan base and alumni base, and there's a lot of passion. Um, it's a fraternity like no other. Oh, you can absolutely tell. Is now up to the plate, Matthew Guyton, as he fouls that one back. Count goes to two and one. Wyatt Baskin went down on strikes on the check swing, couldn't hold up there. One out. This is Matthew Guyton up here. Matthew, 
probably the strongest kid in Post Oak. Matthew played uh, with my son on the All-Star team the entire time. He plays at Kincaid now. Um, he, he wrote on here he can bench 185 pounds. When he was a little kid, he thought his arms were going to come out. He swung so hard. <laughs> but Matthew is uh, Matthew's a special kid. He's, I would say, probably the rock star on the team. Swing and a miss there from Guyton, and he goes, count goes full three and two. You know, the funny part is, is that none of these kid, none of these teams um, were even in the top half, and so they're both in here in the in the championship game. Yeah, I saw it was the Braves and the Wolverines earlier that were that no. were ahead of, of, of both of these teams. Well, the, the Padres was one of the, the one, and then uh, the White Sox out of 12 were in fifth, and then the Cubs actually were the eighth-ranked team. So Guyton's a real disciplined player. Uh, he doesn't swing at bad pitches, and so he either hammers or he walks. But uh, yeah, and he, he took Joe Hansen all the way to a full count there and, and didn't let go to that one in the dirt. You know, the funny part is, is is that when we all play baseball, we didn't have sliding gloves. Now it seems like that there's a, a yard sale after every time that they uh, get on base, they just start ripping off gear and gloves and all sorts of stuff. Oh, yeah, and this one's Parker Chiles. He hits one to the shortstop, Lahan, throws up grounds, it throws over to Smith for the second out of the inning. Runner's going to advance to second and third on that ground out by Parker Chiles. Chiles is his Chiles. name. Parker yeah. Chiles is his name. His dad. Um, Used to be the president of Post Oak. Great family here. Um, they've really supported Post Oak over the years. His father was a alumni player. You know, there's a lot of that around here. Their, their fathers played, they played. Um, for a lot of people, this is a special place for them. Now Johansson has to go up against the number five hole hitter, Henry Van Oz. Henry Van Oz, uh, stud. He was an all-star last year in the 12 team, the 12 team went all the way um, to sectional. Sectionals, they lost in the second game to Paraland. And the way that the All-Star work is, is that a couple, four years ago, we had a team that represented on the Little League World Series. And this one's lined up. Oh, that ball is gonna line. get down. We're gonna court, score a couple runs here. There's it's, one, there's two. A, That's a stand-up double right there. Economids getting that in the corner back here. It is going to be a stand-up du double for Van Oz. Two runs scoring on that line drive down the first base line. You know, the neat part about all this is, is that these, these kids coaching these teams, there's about six of them. This is Eli Ferber. Yep. His mom actually, I think, was a, uh, I, I don't think, I know, um, was a really, really good volleyball player in college. Um, and so he's a, he's a longtime alumni here. I coached him as a young child. I'm sure, she, I'm sure he took into her height a little bit. As yeah, dad's tall, kids. too. Dad's tall, too. So we miss there from Ferber, and the count goes to 0-2. Or 0-1, excuse me. So anyway, so all, all these these kid, these people who coach, most of them are ex-alumni who have been out here, and they devote their time um, to coach. Scoreboard flip. They devote their time to coach out here for the pride and love of Post Oak and, you know, six of them over there and six of them on each side. And, you know, most of them are all 26, you know, just starting their careers. And it's a great networking tool, but, boy, they want to win. Absolutely. We've been joking around that the fraternity boys are over there coaching the Cubs, you know, all in the button-down polos with the khakis and stuff like that. And I've been, I've been joking with them out here this week. It's been a good time, though. They, got, they came back from that game. They were down uh, four or five runs, had a seven-run inning to come back and, and end up winning. I know. Unfortunately, that, that was against my uh, my son's team. They go down yep. swinging. That's 2-0 here. Yep, Ferber goes down swinging. That'll end the first inning. Cubs come out with a 2-0 lead. Bottom of the first inning, the White Sox are coming up. You're listening to the Junior Championship Post Oak Little League game here on Vibe Live.
bottom of the first inning. The White so or Cubs le leading the White Sox two to nothing here early, after a two-run double by Henry Van Oz scoring Matthew Guyton and Miles Camarda. It's going to be the White Sox now. They're going to be led off by their shortstop K Kalino Lehan. Kalino Lehan, man. Lehan, man. And he's he's he was a uh, seven-year player, I think six-year player. Played on the All-Star team the entire time. Um, Andrew Clark was the coach for uh, that team. His son Jackson was a great player. Andrew, um, probably one of the smartest thing he ever do did was grab Lahan. Lahan was just a pure natural athlete, and he turned him into quite an athlete here. He's a great baseball player, great family. Oh, yeah. On the mound there is uh, Matthew Guyton. That's the one I was telling you. Strong as an ox. And he's going to be throwing it probably, he'll touch 75, 76 here, which is 46 feet. That's or 56 feet. What are it, 54 feet? It's pretty impressive as Lehan hits one down the first baseline. It's going to be the pitcher, Guyton, grabbing it and stepping on the base himself. It's Guyton, the natural born athlete, coming off the mound there, going to the first base line to get that, to get that ground out, step on the bag for out number one. And now brings up the catcher, Patrick Fowler. Right-hander steps in for the White Sox here with one out. Fowler is uh, Fowler's been here a long time. He's actually uh, he's got one more year. Uh, he hits this one down. Second baseman Childs. Childs steps up, throws over to Ferber for a quick two outs. Two quick outs here in the bottom of the first inning. You know Parker Childs played with me uh, in the 2020 season year of COVID, he was an Astro with me and we claimed that we won the world championship. So uh, Parker's a world champion, Astro is a major. So <laughs> they can't take that away from us, can they? No, they definitely can't. Uh -uh. As, I, I as I tell the haters, we'll just go bang out another one. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, especially when they don't have to finish the season. So this is BJ Johansson, Braden. Yep. So Braden's uh, Braden's an old school guy. He li he likes it like Ty Cobb, you know, socks up high, pants above the knees. Braden's a big hitter. He's a big kid. Great oh, yeah. pitcher. Johansson had an RBI triple back in that last game, and also got on late with a walk and a scored run on that seventh inning against against your son's Braves. Yeah, he also took one deep uh, against the wall to my son. They play. Yeah, uh, that, yeah that was in that. That was in that third inning. Yeah, they, they play a lot of baseball together. You probably hear his dad over here now. He's got quite the voice. That ball's moving that he's throwing right there. So that one just a little bit outside. Count goes to two and one to Joe Hansen. You know, the neat part about Post Oak is there's a lot of these grandparents that come out here and they don't miss a game. So, you know, for example, my in-laws have six kids out here. Six wow. grandkids, and I bet you they haven't missed more than four games. So this is 21st game they've had here in the uh, playoff series. Each one of these teams plays, you know, about 16 games. There's a minimum four-touch rule, so for a lot of these kids, they play baseball every single day for about two months. It's a workload. It's a lot being out in this sun, being out in this Houston heat. I can tell you, I play a little bit of baseball myself. And Boy, you know, these athletes how about that? Lot. Yeah, what a pitch there. It's Matthew Guyton pinpoints that inside corner to freeze Braden Johansson there for the final out of the inning. We go to the top of the second, Cubs leading the White Sox 2-0. to zero.
You're back live? So we got a, we got a we got a famous guy here helping us. Josh, how many years you been out here? Oh, uh, probably about 25. 25 years? Yep. So Josh runs uh, all the umpires out here. It's kind of a thankless job. Um, I know for a fact because I've heard many parents yell at him. I've been around Josh a long, long time. I think almost nine years. Josh puts his heart and soul into this place out here. He he runs all the umpires and. He runs a peewee, which is kind of like the heartbeat of it all. And uh, Josh takes a lot of heat, and he deals with uh, these parents very well. And uh, Post Oak is lucky to have Josh. Josh played as a kid out here. Actually, I was over at West U when I was a kid. Okay. So Josh knows every one of these kids. Most of their parents. And most of their parents, and probably everyone's yelled at them. At one, at one point in time. So. I just wanted to tell Josh, thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks, Josh. Bay, are you on the, are you on the I want to thank Pee Wee, head of umpires, Josh, for coming on with us here. We're in the top of the second inning. Cubs are up to bat. They're being led off by their outfielder, J.P. Whitley. And he's going to get his first look at Braden Johansson today. Count starts out at 2-0. and JP, you know, he's a good kid. As Whitley fouls that one back, count now goes to two and one. Cubs getting off to an early start in that top of the first inning. Camarda with a walk and Guyton with a walk, and Henry Van Oz ended up hitting them in with a two run scoring double. Then it was a one, two, three inning for the White Sox. Boy, there's a hammer. As Whitley. Shoots this one line drive right up the middle. Center fielder Gillenshaw gets to it. Whitley's going to lead off second inning for the Cubs with a single. So the boys all had a little uh, Q&A here. And uh, not only did he just hammer one up the middle, he's also uh, makes straight A's. So right here, they are allowed to what they call special run for someone. And so these coaches. They're allowed to have one um, SPR, special runner, and that's what you just saw right there. Yep, courtesy runner, or special runner is going to be Haynes Camarda coming in for the Cubs. He's actually their third baseman today, not in the batting order. Big country, big country. His parents out of uh, Baton Rouge. He's, he goes to St. Francis. Um, and as he wrote, you know, from a Louisiana boy, his favorite food's crawfish. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Now up to bat, Ford Bennett. The lefty swings through and misses on that one. Count goes to one and one. Huh? Is that one a little bit outside? Who, who's at bat? I one. can't see that far. Yep, Ford Bennett. I don't, that's not Ford. I know F-250. Yeah, so what happens here is, is is that at this age, there's 12 on a team. They only bat nine. So the rule is out here is, is that every player has to only bat once. And so there's some strategic, re, or strategic to this whole deal. So they'll pick in time when they want that one batter to hit. So... You, they'll sub in and out. So some players will only bat one time. That's all the minimum play is out here. So, so it looks like this is number two, J.P. Whitley, and that's Camarda getting picked off there by Joe Hansen. What a move by Joe Hansen as Camarda just a little bit hesitate, hesitation there, getting back into first base, and he's going to get picked off for the first out of the inning. But yeah, so that actually is going to be number two, J.P. Whitley. That's Dean Smith. He's the umpire on first base. Dean's been out here about 20 years. He definitely has heard a lot of mouths from a lot of these mothers out here. <laughs> Swing and a miss. I know for Whitley a fact. Down on strikes. Yeah. Looks hey. like we just got those mixed up. I believe that was Ford Bennett. No, not yet. Who went down? Who went down on strikes earlier? And then now uh, we have Alexander Ramirez, the nine-hole hitter. 
So just just got J.P. Whitley and Ford Bennett mixed up there. Well, if they put us closer, we could see. You know, that's kind of yeah, the problem that's, out here. That's been that's been the issue. Uh, you know, you got to tell your boss we need some micro. I mean, some uh, magnifying glasses or some <laughs> binoculars out here. Swing Shane is a great friend of mine. Um, Shane Hilders does a great job with Vibe and all of the media he puts together out here. He he recently took over the cameras and the. What I call, we top graded. Yeah. We didn't just upgrade it, we top graded. Shane's a great guy and he's gonna do great things for kids sports. He's, he's got a new NFT thing that he's going out with and he's uh, really helping promote these players um, across the state of Texas and all sorts of different things. And, you know, now that there's this NIL rule where kids can get played, I, I think that there's a lot more attention on these you know, high school players or, you know, lower level core. It's just real pure. Absolutely. Yeah. And Shane does a good job of really kind of embracing that. And Shane and I, there we go, Swing down on three. There, and there goes Alexander Ramirez. We'll get right back to this going into the bottom of the second inning. Cubs leading the White Sox two to nothing. Bottom of the second inning, Cubs leading the White Sox two to nothing. Here it's going to be the White Sox up to bat. It's going to be four, five, and six hitters for them. They're going to be led off by their second baseman, John Dominguez. Yes. So Kyle, something you probably you know knew but didn't know. So it's a double elimination tournament. Yes. So uh, if the Cubs win. Yes. We got another one. We got another one because they came from the losers bracket. They came right. from the losers bracket, so they'll play right here. So. Uh, Yes, so, we might we might be running it back. We might we might be running it back, and uh, you know we we've got some great commentary. We're gonna hear hear in a little bit from the great Todd Glazier. He's gonna be the incoming president of the Post Oak. Todd is uh, he's the heart and soul of Post Oak around here now. Between he and the current president Andrew, they give a lot of heart and soul into this place. Absolutely. Matthew Guyton on the mound for his second inning of work, facing John Dominguez, counts 0-1, and, and swing and a miss, and that one's fouled down the first baseline for Dominguez. For a lot of kids, this is kind of the, you know, the, it's a big deal for Post Oak. Um, this is kind of a big thing. If you look out on the left field fence, those are all the juniors and kids that are here supporting. You know, the, the crazy thing about Post Oak is, is you have all this support out here and we don't own this field. We lease this from HISD. And we're going to have 
a day that will come that Post Oak will need to step up and find its permanent home and this alumni base and everyone here, we're excited for that opportunity. Um, there, there's a lot of great examples. If you go down to Pearland and see their place, it's, it's deck. I mean, the, the field is done by the Astros. If you go to Westview Little League, it looks like a Norman Rockwell painting. Um, Bel Air, it's another great little league in town. And they've got a they've got a couple fields, and one of them they have a field. Um, it's the Weiner Field, and the Weiner Field sits in the back. Um, off of Bel Air, and this, it feels like just a, the most magical thing. It's, you know, bricked, bricked dugouts, and there's a train track in the back. It's just something special, and one day Post Oak is going to have something like that. It feels like it's almost like a minor league park, you know, with all the detail and everything they put, they put into that. And there he goes down swinging. Dominguez going down on strikes here for the first out of the inning. Yeah, Go ahead and bring in, yeah. Yeah, Todd. Yeah, so come on in here. So t Todd Glazier is a great friend of mine. Our kids are great friends. He, uh, his son is actually at this, you know, kind of puts in a weird age in little league. The the kids don't play by grade, so all these kids are really in the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. So. Up to bat next is a great friend of ours, great kid. As I said, the longest, long-time player out at Post Oak. His name is Bryson Knowles. Bryson's the youngest. Bryson was actually the top uh, draft pick as a nine-year-old, I think. And uh, Bryson was an all-time all-star. But as I was saying, Todd, you know, Landon got born just like my son at kind of the wrong age. That's right. He's got the, uh, the midsummer birthday which uh has been great for him just because he gets to play with you know a little bit older talent which makes him play better but he misses one year every year with all his buddies from his class but it's it's a great experience i actually when i played out here at post oak at the same scenario would always play one year with my buddies that were i was in school with and then uh the following year i was up in the, the next division without all my friends but 2-1 here to Bryson. That's what Paul's all about, as Brian, I'm sure, has said. This is this is just a family community out here, and we've been here for – I've been out here since 1979, which ages me, but that's okay. How many years do you play out here, Todd? I played from 78 to 85, I guess. And how many years did you coach as a junior? So I coached the juniors for nine years with Andrew, our outgoing president. So that's nine plus seven, yeah. 16 years, and then your boy's done seven years? Six years. This is six years. So is that 25? Pretty close. That's more than almost half your age, Yeah, right? that is half my age. I'll be 50 this summer. How about that, big boy? There you go. Yeah. It's a pretty good place to spend my life, though. Yeah. It's, it's, it's you know, Honey Glaze is his son's name, and, God, we're just happy to have him in our life, and Todd's become a great friend. I'm right back at you, B.A. <laughs> Here we go. So... Bryson uh, winds up on, what do you think? What's your prediction here? I would say he is, so we got a, he, he, he walked. Now we've got uh, up for the White Sox is uh, Will Landers. Will Landers is a great country lane boy. He's been a great neighbor, great family. His dad is a heck of a musician. What, what, do you, what is your prediction? The Sox going to get it done, or are we playing two? I, I, you know, at, at, as of right now, I mean, with Guyton dealing the way he is, and uh, they've got the little 2 nothing lead, it's early. we got to go seven, but. Um, I'm asking for a prediction. I, I will say we'll be playing game two. Ooh, if you're gonna there ask, we go. Just go. Let's go two. Let's play two as, as, was it Willie McCovey? Who was it, the Cub, the famous Cub, or was it, uh, who, who am I thinking of? Ernie Banks. Ernie right. Banks. Let's play two. So that's, there we that's, go. That's right. That's right. Uh, crazy story. My family grew up in Chicago, and I had an opportunity one time as a young child to sit in the uh, broadcast booth with Harry Carey oh, wow, and Lou Boudreaux, and they let me talk. So uh, so this guy over here, when you go to Post Oak, is this you know, semi-larger man who walks around with a camo lens on and takes these pictures and is the hardest working man in Post Oak. His name is Matt Bennett. MRB, Mr. 
bco.com, right, yeah. Matt? Yep. Correct. And Matt is an angel of a human. Todd, tell me about him. Man, unbelievable. What he what he captures out here, the pictures, the just life with these boys. He sent me a picture that night that was just it defies land, and he's in a picture with Hayes Camarda, who's about I don't know five eleven. Landon's about four nine. It's just an awesome picture of them at second base, standing and talking to each other during the game. It was really, really neat. Man, we, we apologize, but I think uh, Mr. Glazier and I, we might take over a little bit here for a little bit. You know, this they, they put out these guys. His name's Kyle. He comes out here. He's, he doesn't know a single one of the kids. Not fair to him. He's doing a great job, but I'm telling you, Todd knows every person out here. He knows every family. He knows their parents. Todd is, uh, we're, we're lucky to have Todd. So Lander's up here, what we got, one, two. One, two, one out. Runner on first. God, it's, it's just kind of neat out here to watch it all when you take it down and look out here and look at all these kids. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. We've got probably, I mean, at least a couple thousand people just around this junior field, plus with the minors championship game going on. It'll get real crowded here in a little bit because we've got the Pee Wee game. So t tell us the schedule for today. That was a strikeout by, Land by Guyton on Landers. That brings up Kyle Conamides. Gus and the Conamides are some of the best people ever. Tell, tell us about it. Um, Gus, he, the dad, runs a uh, auto body dealership and he's part-time cook. Just one of the finest human beings he in the is. world. He, there's not a better human on this earth, actually, than Gus Conamides. You need something. You pick up the phone, I'll call you. He's there in a second. God. Yeah, and that's just kind of the thing about this place is that I always say you either come to Post Oak and you leave with a lot more friends or a lot less friends. And I think they're going to leave with a lot more friends. So we got Guyton on the hill, two outs. Is that Gillen Shaw up there? Uh, Kyle, kind of me. Oh, Kyle still. Bryson, Bryson Oles over at first with two outs after drawing the walk. These boys have got to be a little warm, B.A. It's pretty, uh, pretty steamy out there. Thank you for Shane for bringing us this uh, nice sunshade up here. I could sit here all day and yap. Take a chair. You're going to sit with me for a while. I'm, just, I, I'm good. Thank you. Now, so we have a uh, peewee game. What time does it start? It starts at 7. Uh, Miners just kicked off at 5.30. And then the majors conclude at 7.30. Could be a good long night here at old Post Oak Little League. Best place on earth. That's what they say. That's what they say. I'm surprised that they're not going to run them right here. Put yeah. one in scoring position. Absolutely. Got to get a little bit aggressive. Throw over by Guyton. Guyton is a uh, man child. <laughs> he really is, B.A. It's unbelievable. I mean, he is built like a racehorse. I mean, eighth grader at Kincaid, is that Eighth right? grader at Kincaid, heck of a football player. Strong as an absolute ox. He, he put on his Q&A here, could bench 185 pounds. I think my son weighs 110 dripping wet. Strike by Guyton, one and two, two outs. Byron Jeter back behind the plate as the umpire. Byron's been out here for about 15 years, and Byron is just an absolute stud. And, we got Dean. Dean is 20 years. And, um, and Theodore over at second. And Bill. Yes. Bill's, Bill's the man. Yes, he is. Let's hope, let's hope Theodore has a cold towel on his neck. He unfortunately got a little heat stroke last week. He did? During the game. Shoot, when you're wearing all black out here in Houston. God, that's right. 2-2 two, two count, two outs. Oh, uh, you got to be running right here. Now, who's, who's the coach over there on uh, for the Sox on first base? Jack Smith. Is that him on first? Is that him? I think so. Noel Steelen. There we go. Kyle with the ground down. Golly, that's Guy athletic. Here, nice athletic play to end the inning. Go to the top of the third. All right, we're going we're gonna to hold one off here. So we're going to go to the top of three, 2-0. Um, we'll be back in a few. Yep.
And here we are back at the top of the third. Johansson still on the hill for the White Sox. Leading off for the Cubs will be Miles Camarda. 2 nothing, Cubbies lead as we head to the third. Change the scoreboard. Yeah, if we could get the scoreboard correct, because it is the top of the third. There we go. They were listening to us. Johansson with four Ks through the first two. Little ball outside. You know, we got a Windy City rivalry here, you know? Chi Town would be real happy. Yes, sir. I didn't even think about that. Baby. Yeah, you know, it just kind of came to me. You know, I was just in Chicago. Wow, what a play by Owen Smith. Great play for the first out of the inning. Lays one out there. Owen comes from great stock. His parents are unbelievable. Spring Branch, eighth grader, just lays one out, saves one from going down the right field line, brings up Guyton here. Uh, uh, Wyatt. Uh, Wyatt Baskin, who came his first at bat, but let's see what he can do here. Yeah. Guyton in the hole, or on deck, excuse me. NBA, I'm sure glad we're under this canopy. I would not want to be Johansson on the mound in this 100 degree heat. There's a shot oh, to boy. left field by Baskin. Landers with a nice catch out left for the second out of the inning. You know, the amazing part that I think is just unbelievable is the progression that these kids make from, from being nine to being 13, just as baseball talent, awareness, and strength, and you know, T tell me about what you think the difference between an eight-year-old and a nine-year-old is, and even, you know, a 12-year-old to a 14-year-old just in strength and ability. Oh, I think it's huge. I think, I mean, it, you know, the years I coached and as you've coached as well, we always would take the second-year kid. It's just such a difference in age and strength. I mean, just in experience. You know, oh, there's a nice shot by Guyton to left center. Gilles wow, what nice a catch. To end the inning. That Holy is, mackerel. wow, that changes the whole thing right there, that ball. One, two, three inning for the Cubbies there. Go down, we go to the bottom half of the third. The Cubs Windy City is, uh, man, if they were Wrigley or Comiskey, they'd be screaming loud right now. They got a, quite a ball game.
third inning between the Cubs and White Sox. The Cubs currently leading two to nothing. It's going to be the White Sox. They're going to be led by their center fielder, Thomas Gillenshaw, leading it off this inning. New pitcher on for the Cubs is Wyatt Baskin. And you want to talk a little bit about that, Brian? A little chess move, I think. A little chess move, I think. Uh, bottom of three here. I think that they think that there's going to be another game here after and that they are pulling Guyton so that I guess he could pitch. Did, I, I don't think so, right? I mean, how many pitches did he just have? We've got to find that one out because I'm not quite sure the rule if it's 20, if there's no day. We've got to find that out. Yeah, Guyton through two innings ended up going two full innings, gave up zero hits, no earned runs, only had one walk and three strikeouts. So it's not like he was struggling or anything like that. And I, I can promise you his pitch count was low as we're only through the eighth batter of the order You know, I, the White Sox. I, I feel like I've been out here long enough, but I'm not quite sure. So the, the rule goes is, is that 20 pitches you can put, pitch next day, 35 one day's rest, 52 days rest. And at this age, you can go to 95 with four days rest, but I'm not quite sure what happens when there's back-to-back -back games. We don't know either. Maybe the coaching staff knows something that we don't. Yeah, you know? it's probably a local rule that just implemented it. There's a strike on the corner. Yeah, Gillenshaw now 2-1 to one goes the count. Wyatt Baskin, who was the catcher, is on the mound now. Wyatt is a uh, stud of an athlete. The right-hander delivers, and that's fouled. Backing away for Gillenshaw. Count goes to 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, so I saw your kid out here, Brian, uh, on Wednesday. Your kid actually started and pitched a full. I want to say he was out there for at least 85, 90 he pitches. He went 100 pitches. Bennett went 100 pitches. Yeah. Then they brought him back in. Yeah, they brought yeah. You know, kind of a weird <laughs> rule here that they can bring a pitcher back in. But I have – there's a strike. He's yep. staying alive there. Um, I have three boys out here playing. And uh, my, old, my middle one is on the 12-year-old – all-star postseason team that will try to make it to Williamsport. They've um, got a long road ahead, but I promise you they're going to be coached by Johnny Randolph, who is, wow, what a pitch there. That was a breaking ball. Yeah, his Gillenshaw literally almost fell down uh, with the squat drill he did right there as he thought that one was coming right to his dome and just froze him there for the final strike of that one. One out for Wyatt Baskin in the Cubs. I can't see who is playing shortstop for the Cubs now. Uh, it was That'd be Henry, Henry Van Oss. He's over there at short. Now coming up for the White Sox, it's the first baseman, Owen Smith. Seven up Smith had that great diving stop there, that last inning that we just saw. The big O, they call him, uh, you know, he loves baseball, but he loves fishing more. <laughs> um, but there's the ball. I thought that would be a strike. Uh, you know, the thing about it out here is I've, the, that the 12-year-olds, they, they try really, really, really hard, and they put on a lot of effort. Johnny Randolph coaches that team, and he'll be um, playing tonight against the Astros, Shane Hildreth, for the Majors Championship. But um, we also have uh, three nephews that play out here as well, and so um, th their last name is Cyrus Porter Everett. And Conway, I call them the rapping crew, Master P, Easy E, and Kanye West. And, um, they're led by their father who coaches out here as well. His name's Andy, and he does a great job. He's coaching the Pee Wee Mustangs. There's a strike on the corner. 3-2 here. Jones in there, as you see Byron Jeter kind of looking toward the Cubs bench, explaining the calls. As saw that wing in there for a strike pitch before it was outside. Count goes full to Owen Smith. Wyatt Baskin delivering the pitch there's that a walk low, and it's going to be Owen Smith going down to first with a walk one out for the White Sox here in the bottom of the third yeah but like I was saying there um my in-laws their grandparents their last names Cashler Susan and Larry Cashler I'm, I'm pretty sure that they attend more games than any other family out here and uh, on my team as the Marlins this year we had um a family of the Sages and another family of the Nicholsons, and they're just these grandparents that support these kids that is just unbelievable. And, you know, it's kind of funny. You, you hear these parents just kind of go crazy, and you go ask the grandparents, 
and they have such a much better perspective on what this is all about. Yeah, and I mean, you talk about the parents, Brian. I mean, just being out here this week, you know, the amount of kids support y'all have, not only from the small, you know, four or five year olds all the way up to, you know, you see high schoolers walk around here supporting these kids. It really does bring that community feel all, all together and really feels like everybody wants the best for everybody else coming out of this post Oak Little League. Uh, as, as long as they're not playing their son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Is a strike to Kalina Lejon. He's back top of the order, back for the White Sox here, runner at first base is Owen Smith. I'm going to make a prediction. He's going to hit one hard right here. Kalina's going to get on base, and we're about to have a little inning. Wow, catches one on the corner. That 0-2 here. Wyatt, uh, Wyatt, as I said, came from uh, a pitching family. And as I said before, his grandmother is over there scoring the game by hand. There's something new out here. They call it Game Changer. So Game Changer is something that Grandparents can watch these games, and there's these webcams out here, and you'd be surprised how many bars have seen have, have seen a random parent or grandparent or a nice dinner with on the iPad or phone. They're watching a kid's game. Oh, absolutely! And high schoolers use all Game Changer too. I've, I've seen. Been yeah, but these are nine-year-old kids. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> And you can really go in and score the entire game. Oh, game God. Changer. I mean, no, it, it pinpoints all the way down to some of the advanced analytics major leaguers are using. So. Yeah, and it, even, and, you know, and it even is more funny when they go in and change it. Uh-oh, there we go. As the ball got by Ferber just a little bit, nicked the top of his glove, but no damage done. Is Owen Smith going to stand firmly at first base? So, Kyle, tell me about you. Where are you from? Yeah, so I actually grew up in Missouri City. Uh, Motown. Well, yeah, yeah. Moved to Missouri City when I was seven. Originally grew up in Stafford. Um, attended Rich Point High School, the new high school they built over there in Siena. Uh, was a part of Missouri City Little League growing up and played freshman year at Rich Point and ended up choosing the marching band and played French horn for seven straight years and went to a state champion, uh, a state tournament in Austin. We got a chance to go out there and played the French horn for high school. Then I went and attended the University of North Texas where I got a degree in, in journalism, business, and economics. The great Denton, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean told green. you. Mean Green, as that one's hit down the left side, Van Oz not able to grab it, but did knock it down with his glove. Runners are going to advance. Lejon at first, and Owen Smith going to go over to second. You still playing the horns? I am not, no. I'm I, a huge I'm music fan, more, huge I, music fan. I really I really miss it. You know, French horn's one of the more expensive instruments in the brass section. Uh, growing up, my mom played the French horn. Um, we have never owned one, I've always rented. So that's that's really the main reason why I haven't picked it up and uh, and played a few notes in a little bit, yeah. Both marching and concert, so I would, the marching was pretty much just bigger trumpet and the French horn was the concert that you see that you, um, with the big with the big horn that comes and rests on your leg. My mother at a young age took me to go see the Lincoln City Orchestra and um, went in Marcellus and yeah. so uh, I, I found a great loving. You know the amazing part with uh, concert pianists and concert orchestras is uh, the most important person is the one without the horn. Yeah, the director. The director, right? It's like it's like in uh, it's like a coxman in a in a row team. You know, he's the yeah. person keeping them all together. That's sort of like a coach exactly. out here, right? Absolutely, absolutely. It's kind of keeping everybody on the same rhythm, on the same page, making sure that um, everybody's tones are sounding alike. So you know, the the, the crazy thing about it is, is that uh, you know, at these age, at this age, you know momentum shifts so much and these kids confidences and believe that's a shot this one's popping fowler. In the outfield fowler getting under it uh, we're gonna stay and it's gonna be caught by camarda out there in center field two outs now for the cubs runners remain on first and second yeah so what i was saying you know there, there's so many kids that at this level that you know at the smallest little thing they just lose confidence here comes up johansson two outs you know um if there's a time for a big player to make a big play, this would be the time right here. Um, so, you know, I, I I expect him to be a baller right here, and I see, I think you're going to see one in play. Yeah, big spot here for Johansson. Struck out looking back in the first to end the inning. Here with the big opportunity, though, with the runner in scoring position in Smith and Lejon at first base. Yeah. Um, 
This is, a, this is a big point of the game here. So top of the lineup, men in scoring position. Wyatt dealing 1-1 one, one here. Yep, calls that one a strike. No, but you know, it, it's just so critical for these kids to stay positive and believing in themselves. Because the minute that it crumbles, boy, it crumbles quick. Absolutely, as he watches that one go out in the dirt. And to your point, Brian, I was actually calling a couple of Pee Wee games a couple days ago um, between the Bruins and the uh, Dogs and stuff like that. And a lot of those kids you see, especially at that young age, they're getting down, they get down themselves. But the coaches do such a great job of pumping these kids back up and giving them the confidence they wow. need at that young age. Wow, 2-2 two, two there. As Joe Hansen looks at that one, yeah, count goes to 2-2, two and two, deuces wild. Yeah, we, I, I learned from probably the master, I call him the uh, children Yoda. His name was uh, Brady Knight. He would uh, put Tiger Bomb on their arms and call it hitting cream, and he would have pixie sticks and put it in their mouth. Wow, there Joe we go. Johansson goes down looking again. Second strikeout of the game for Johansson. Wyatt Baskin ending his first inning of work with two strikeouts. We go to the top of the fourth inning. Cubs leading the White Sox two to nothing. of the fourth inning, Cubs leading the White Sox here two to nothing. Brayden Johansson taking the mound for his fourth inning of work. It's gonna be the four, five, and six hitters for the Cubs and leading it off is Parker Childs. He hits one down to the third baseman, Knowles, and he gets the first out of the inning. So you know, it, it, the, the neat part about it is, is that all these boys, you know, they're kind of at that young age where they have, you know, girlfriends and stuff, and these girls come out and support these boys. Uh, you know, it's amazing what happens when they get to 13 and 14 years old. <laughs> I'm not quite sure if they're focused on the baseball or the girls. I'll tell you, when I, when I was that age, Brian, I, it was pretty tough for me to be focused on baseball, especially, you know, with all the girls around. God, there's a ton of them out here, aren't they? I promise you they don't have brothers out here. <laughs> so, uh... See some of these outfielders, you know, dazing off, looking over here to the left side. <laughs> it's hard not to, I guess, for them, right? <laughs> Uh oh, that's a shot. Henry Van Oz popping up to the center fielder, Gillenshaw. He gets under it for the second out of the inning. Quick two outs for the White Sox. Man, I think the Windy City would be proud of this game. Yeah, definitely low scoring. Not used to the, not like the first two games that I covered here. I think one of them went to like 10 to 8 or something. And it was a uh, lot of, Ferber lot of up runs to bat. Scored. Yep, it's going to be first baseman Eli Ferber went down on strikes. 
uh, back in the first inning. So tell me about your experience in Denton. Yeah, it was great. You know, my, my thing was I, I really wanted to get away from the area and, and learn a little bit more about myself. You know, I was, um, you know, you grow up in, in a home for 17 years and you want to try and mature and do stuff on your own. And I wanted to get as far away but still have that uh, the um, state tuition, you know, not get too expensive for me. And, uh, I, I, I had a I had a, a brief stint with a, uh, a business in Cook County up in um, Munster, Texas, near Gainesville, Texas, and I would... Yeah, that's right there by the border. Yeah, right there. You know you know the most famous thing that ever came out of uh, North Texas, right? Mean Joe Green. Nah, yeah, that was Mean Joe Green, too, but <laughs> Unnecessary Roughness, the movie. Remember that one? Really? No, I don't. Yeah, I don't. man. That's a great movie. I'll have, I'll have to look that one up. Yeah, great movie. So, you know, the, the, the neat part about this is they can bring back in the original pitcher. So, Guyton's still available. I'm not quite sure how many he's got. That's a little chopper. That's going to be tough. Here we go. Big yep. Eli. Trying to run it out. The two first basemen, and it's going to be Smith beating Ferber down there for the final out of the inning. One, two, three inning for the White Sox. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. We'll probably stay on yep. here during the thing, yeah, you know. Um, so... I don't know. I don't know what we think here. You know, bottom of the fourth. We're gonna play till seven. There's not a there's not a time limit here. So no hour forty. Like no hour was, forty like in the championship the game. Yep. So we're gonna run to seven. It'll be it, a full seven. It'll be a full seven. Okay. And uh, I'm not quite sure about the. We're gonna we're gonna get uh we're gonna get some rulings on the pitch count. Um, let me let me go and find something and then we'll get back and find out that So back here in the bottom of the fourth, right? Bottom of the fourth inning, Cubs leading the White Sox two to nothing. And we just got a little uh, clarity on the rules. And so uh, they take the day's count. So these pitchers are allowed to pitch 95 pitches, irregardless if it's one or two games. So little little uh, chess going on here. They take Baskin out of the game, put the starter back in the game. So clearly what they're going to do is rotate them uh, to keep fresh arms. So you think next inning, after Guyton gets done with this, they bring back Baskin and try and keep them both under, what, 50, 60 pitches? It doesn't or? matter. They can go to 95 today. Yeah. So as long as they stay 95 by the end of the second game, the Cubs are playing chess right now, uh, trying to get through the first game. So they got to win the first game, but... They don't want to not be able to win the second game. And so they're rotating pitchers. Smart move. Uh, the so I'm trying to see 
who they pitched against your brave your son's Braves. They pitched them both. Henry Van Oz actually started. Oh, Henry and did. Then it was Eli Ferber that came in, the first baseman now in Haynes. That's Camargo. the second. That was the second in. game. Yes. Oh, in the, okay. The in second the second game, game that's yeah. because they had burned them. I think this is Dominguez up to bat here, right? Go ahead. Let's see back up. Was looking at that last game. Yep, John Dominguez, the cleanup hitter for the White Sox, ended up striking out to lead off the second inning. And you know what? I think I think the it's going to work here. I mean, that ball is moving right there. That that is one of the faster pitches I have seen out here in a long, long time. Guy a one-one count to Dominguez. So, the swing and a miss, strike two, count goes to one and two. The, uh, one of the main coaches on the uh, Cubs is Thomas Burroughs. Thomas's dad, Tommy Burroughs, was one of the uh, presidents of Post Oak. So, he's lived and breathed it out here. So, I'm sure he has been, uh, had Nick Saban in his ears, what I would call Mr. Burroughs, kind of telling him what to do here. But, uh, Guyton's bringing heat. The yep. ball is moving. Swing and a miss, strike three. Dominguez goes down on strikes for this, his second time today. That brings up the third baseman, Bryson Knowles, 0 a for 0 with a walk in that second inning. A.K. BK is what they call him. So BK, uh, BK is an eighth grader. Been a long time, uh, been a long time player out of Post Oak. He, he, he grew up on the second base, but. Uh, He's been holding down the line over here. Watches the first pitch go outside for Guyton for ball so, one. The, the funny part about it is, is that Bryson and Guyton played on the same team forever. And look at the size difference and what uh, puberty and maturity does <laughs> for these kids. Isn't that just amazing, the difference in sizes on them? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, even, even you know, seeing the, the kids from Pee Wee going up to, to see these juniors now, I haven't gotten a chance to see – the majors over there but you know to see the progression and the steps taken from these guys is it's truly amazing going from the pitching machine to now actually having someone on the mound I mean it it's just creates a completely different dynamic for these young hitters yeah you know the great equalizer is puberty you know I, I, I got another trivia question for you here how many players do you think had all these years at post oak has ever played in the major leagues got a lot of talent out here in the city of Houston I, I'd have to assume it's in the double digits you think it's in the double digits? I'd say around 12. I'm going to give 15. you the great answer. It's zero. <laughs> there have been, there's been two players that played in AAA, but not a single player at Post Oak Little League has ever played in the major leagues. Wow. Did not know that. Isn't that crazy? It is. Isn't that crazy? It just shows you how tough it is to be at that level yeah. you know, at, of Major League Baseball. So I coached with one of the probably the you know top five players ever, John Nicholson, who was a pitcher. Uh, spent many years in the minors, or as they said, had a cup of coffee. Um, but it's it just shows you how deep baseball is, and you know you're in Houston, some of the strongest little league in the country, you know. Definitely. God, that ball's moving. That one comes back on it. It was a three-one count. Now it makes the count full. To Bryson Knowles, nobody on base. The White Sox, with only one hit on the day, have got three on base by a couple of walks from Guyton and Baskin, but that's all the offense so far for the White Sox through three and one-third innings. They're not going to get much offense if he stays up there and he's got the ability to go 95 and they can turn in and out. And that's a check swing there. No, that's a strikeout. He ended up going for Bryson Knowles, just couldn't lay off that off speed in the dirt, and that brings up Will Landers with two two outs. Got the Guy of the fourth inning. Guyton's throwing gas today, right? Absolutely. Yeah, it's Absolutely. Gonna, it's going to be tough. Hasn't, hasn't given up a hit in his two and two-thirds innings. Now facing Will Landers, who he ended up striking out in the second inning as well. You know, he, he he's nicknamed himself Will the Thrill. That's, a, that that's a strike. You can barely see it it's going so fast. He says he likes Sour Patch Kids on here. Well, he needs to take a bunch because if he's going to connect on this one, he's got to swing early. The kids are the watermelon. The, water, the watermelon's sweet. The kids are a little bit sour. I guess Lander's a little bit more of a sour, sour flavor guy. 
You, you mean there's there's there's, there's different sour candy. there's you, different sour patches. Oh, there's yeah, different sour the, patches. You got the tropical. You got the straight up kids. The original with all the with all the sugar on there. Then you got the watermelon with your, which are just the watermelon chunks. When I grew up, it was fruit roll ups. Fruit roll ups. Oh yeah. Yeah. And the, the, but it was only one color. It was just red. Well, there's a new challenge. Have you heard the new fruit roll up challenge going on now? Where they uh, where they open up the full fruit roll up. That's fruit by people. the strip. That's not fruit roll up. Fruit roll up. No, no, no. Where the where the big the big huge fruit roll up thing you wrap you unwrap and then it's just a long strand. No, sir. That'd be fruit fruit by the foot. See. Oh, fruit by the foot. You're right. When you're we right. grew up, it was fruit roll up. Oh, the one you put on your tongue. With the no, tongue no, 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 no. Yeah. See, I'd come home, we watch GI Joe, and then watch fruit roll ups. This is when the Brady Bunch was on, you know. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, that's a little bit. That's gonna be a little bit before my time. That's right? okay. Sorry, that's okay. My, my '96 baby. So. '96. I graduated high school in '97, <laughs> so <laughs> we're gonna age ourselves a little bit. Oh, yeah. You know, they when I grew up, mullets were cool. Now they're already back in style, you know. I was just thinking about getting one myself, Brian. It's Will Andrews watches that one go outside to the backstop. One and two, the count, two outs. Why don't we make a deal here? If the, if they win the first one, you're going to let me shave your head and you could have a mullet on the second game. Does that sound good, Kyle? <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know about that one. No. You're, you're not pot committed on I it? I don't know if I trust I don't know if I trust you with the scissors right now in this situation, Brian. I'm I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to pass up on that one, especially with the Cubs having a 2-0 lead right now. I'm, Harry you know, Carey would have let him do it. That's going to be a losing bet for me as Landers that's hits that slow one down to second base. Chiles, Chiles to get up and throws to Ferber. That's actually Van Oss there. Van Oss well, moves Van Oss over. Move over to second. Yeah, with uh, the pitching change. We go in the top of five? Yep, yep. One, two, three inning. Another one for the White Sox. We'll go to the top of the fifth inning. The Cubs got a chance to add to their lead as they lead currently over the White Sox two to nothing here in the championship of the junior post of Little League. Top of the fifth inning, Cubs leading the White Sox two to nothing. And it's gonna be the Cubs up to bat. It's gonna be their seven, eight, nine hitters, JP Whitley leading off. Hey, we got a new special guest coming in here. Michael Heron is just a legend out here. Thank you for the intro, BA. It's always good. I thought I'd sneak by without uh, having to jump in on this. No, you're gonna you're gonna take an inning with us. I'd be happy to take an inning with you here. Well, we got Braden still up on here. Yeah, he is. So I'm a, I'm a, you're the killer guy. I'm going to be making the plays here. So we got 1-0 on uh, Ferber. So, uh, so we, well, I learned a rule. I didn't know this. Ferber smokes one. Lahan, right under it. So they can go 95 in a day. So it doesn't matter about the game, Michael. You know that? Say that again. So it doesn't matter about the game. So they, it's by the day. So the, the, the pitcher can pitch 95. So what the Cubs have done is, is they've alternated Baskin and Guyton in and out. 
and uh, I guess to keep fresh arms as they go in. I, I stepped away, so you're telling me Guyton went back in. Why Guyton went back in, so they can pitch night. So the, it, the pitch count is by the day, irregardless of the game. So this two, is uh, Ford Bennett up here at the plate right now. Sorry to interrupt you, B.A. Are, are we sure this is Ford? That's Ford Bennett, right? Yeah, that's, that's what I got on. I'm going, no, that's not Ford Bennett. Oh, and two. That is not Ford Bennett. Ford Bennett was nicknamed F-250 for his size. I promise you, that is not <laughs> Ford Bennett. We're going to need uh, a... Uh, Bookmeyer. Okay. That might be Bookmeyer. There we go. That's Bookmeyer. Well, kinda... Bookmeyer, anyway, has got a one and two count on him with one out. So, uh, yeah, that, that you know, this is the championship game, B.A., so you know those coaches only sent four or 500 texts, emails, phone calls, videos regarding pitch counts, catcher counts. I'm sure both teams are on top of it. Count is two and two on Bookmeyer. Where do you think they went before the game? Uh, I, I would like to think they all got locked in a cold, dark room right up until about four o'clock. Yeah. Bookmeyer goes down swinging. So Michael, uh, Michael graciously takes care of all these fields and facilities and makes sure that uh, we get to play on this beautiful place. And Michael takes care of it for HISD, which Post Oak graciously uh, leases on a 90-day lease. Like I said before, one day we're going to have to have a time where it's going to be the alumni's time to step up and make a difference. Yes, sir. And that's... Uh Hopefully that's uh, not sooner than later. I hope so. Yeah, no. Just keep it like this. I, but I, I, th I think I think when the time would come, I think there's enough loyal followers that would do the right thing for this place. Because look at this place right now. We got a one and one and one count or two and zero oh count on. Uh, I, I can't even see who that is. That's a. Uh, uh, that's not Alexander Ramirez. That's a. Uh, you know, we we uh, we definitely don't have enough people out here to be. Spot we need some spotters. We need some binoculars. That's right what here. I was trying to say. BK chopper, chopper to third. BK the out at first. Oh, oh, and drops it at uh, first. We're gonna that call was it. That Gibson. We're gonna call uh, that an William. error on the first baseman. William Gibson reaches with two outs. You think a little pressure getting into him? I don't know. It's maybe the heat. The heat. Oh, there's a slight breeze here. I, th I think I think they're getting a little we're, nervous. We're gonna go to the top of the order here. This is Miles Camarda. This guy will be back next year. Miles, big country, he calls himself. He's uh, he's got a big bat. A little lefty. Ooh, hook hook hangs in there high. What do you do Cubs here if you're the Cubs at this moment? You you play aggressive or? I think you're uh, on auto drive. Looks like the, uh, you know, I stepped away to the Miners game in a little while. The uh, mu uh, Thunder is up 2-1 on the muscles. Your, your old uh, alumni. Yep. What will Thielhorn do with a win today? I can't say that on the radio right now. I'm sure that he will have <laughs> fireworks going off over there. He's such an angel of a guy. Count still 1-0 with two outs on Camarda. We got Gibson over there on first. He looks like he's oh. oh hit and run. Here we go. That's gonna drop. What was I saying about that big bat? That ball's gonna score. That's gonna score. That's gonna score too. Ball gets past him in the outfield. Miles slides That's, in there. Oh hits the hits the coach on third base. We're gonna leave Miles there on third. So that was a master hit right there. 3-0 now. This is a dangerous situation with Guyton next up to bat. Oh man, what do you you know? At what point do you not bring in Lahan? I don't know. You think they're playing for the next game? Did they already give up? I think the Cubs are playing for the next game. Looks like the White Sox could be playing for the next game. I mean, I would have brought in Lahan a little bit ago. Man, we're gonna be oh, we're gonna be honored to be. Uh, the, our next guest is going to be Todd Barnett. He's one of the greatest legends ever to be at Post Oak. Just Wyatt, Wyatt Baskin over there on uh, at the plate right now. It's 0-1 on Wyatt. Here you go. BA just keeps handing off headphones what to everybody. Don't walk by the tent. BA's going to put headphones on you. 
pass ball, Kabarda comes in to make it a 4-0 game. I was on my way to go. <laughs> I thought uh, Michael would be, there's another shot. Nice hit. Baskin with a shot. Baskin with a little looper in center field. Todd, how many years are you coaching out here? I want to say right, 13 or 14. Uh -uh. Good chat. Todd, I think, has the greatest record coaching in all star team. How many games did you lose with Ben and them? You know, I don't know. People don't want to talk about that. I do. <laughs> I want to talk about how many. Two. In how many games? I know you know the number. I, I don't. I think it's in the 30s, though. How about that? So uh, th there's a lot of legends out here, but uh, Todd is one of the only people that has the whole baseball theology named after him. They call it Barnett Ball. Called it Mahomes coming up. Oh, here we go. They're bringing it. Adams, up. get off the sauce. There, there is no. We sauce. got a pitching change here. There, there is no sauce. Uh, it, it, is am that I clean? Right? Did is they that... not call it Barnett Ball for a reason? I think it was Tiger Ball, but. <laughs> Yeah, that's Lahan coming it's in. Colino. Yeah. Great player. Yeah. Um, I feel like they brought him in a little too late. 4-0. They got. A, they were. They had to win to win, and now I feel like they're. Well, I think they can throw in 30 and go next no. game. No. You know what the deal is? No. 95 the day. So irregardless of the two games. Total. Total. I didn't know the rule. Either. I didn't. I didn't either. It used to be 30 or 25, yeah. but. Yeah, no, but when I'm aging definitely. myself, possibly. You know, you're old. Um, but when there's two games, they said here today, they can go 95 total. So it's just both games. Both games. Huh. You, you wouldn't. You would have had. You would have brought it all in the first game if you were the White Sox. Actually, I wouldn't have. No. No. Okay. Tell me what. I will see what happened. And I'm a believer in. Defense and Todd's kind of seeing boy, what happens. Todd's you know? boy Ben was at one point when I first came out here. Todd's boy, I looked over in the Pee Wee field and he is playing shortstop and third. Yeah, that was we <laughs> lost that game. Needless but to say, was, but, it, but he could cover both of the ground. There we go. So Baskin Baskin stole three or two. Excuse me. The Baskin family has quite the uh, legend out here as well. We got a good hitter up here. Yeah, this ball's going deep. Yes. This should be a good matchup. These boys played all stars together all through. Yeah, they sure did. We, we realize this is a Windy City Classic here. I didn't note that until yeah. just now. That's yeah, good. Isn't that crazy? They'd, they'd be having a good time in Wrigleyville right now. You know it's a special day when Todd comes out. Well, my boy's coaching the Cubs, so. Now he played, oh boy. That's a hit in the gap. That's going to be hard to get past that. This guy can fly. He is going to score all the way. Watch this. Well, he could have had a home run, I think. And uh, he is, Guyton is just a man child. He says he's benching 185 pounds now. Well, you know. When your popcorn pops early, it's good stuff in baseball. <laughs> How many years did your older boy play it all the way through, right? Here? Yes. Yes. And so, and he played all the way into Memorial. Parker Childs up is next. And uh, Parker, as I said, was a uh, 2020 world champion uh, Astros coached by me. Unfortunately, we didn't have to finish the whole season because we were stopped by COVID, but I claim the champion. In spite of you, he did good, huh? <laughs> well, you know, I uh, this year on my coaching over the Marlins, I had four coaches and I played owner. And uh, there we go. Well, Parker stepped up big time today. They were in a little pinch because their pitcher-catcher connection, there's a limit on how many you can catch and then pitch, right? So yeah, right. Parker's come in and done a fantastic job at catcher. You got to well, tip your hat to him. 5-0. There's a great Todd Barnett.
Bottom of the fifth inning, Cubs now leading the White Sox five to nothing after a three run top of the fifth inning by the Cubs. It's gonna be the White Sox, it's gonna be the seven, eight, nine heaters, seven, eight, nine hitters being led off by Kyle Economides. Economides. Economides, excuse me, excuse me. There are a lot of people out here now. 2-2 two -two over there in the Miners game. Uh, you're going to see, uh, by the end of it, they call it Styro Row out here, and they're going to be wall to wall. Yeah, it's going to be a good one out here at Post Oak Little League. Matthew Guyton on the mound for his third inning of work. Um, one and one, the count. It's yeah. Economid. Economides. Economides. I got it. I got it. Yes, we just got a little color. Um, you'll go 95 here. Uh, Baskin will do the second game, which it looks like that's going to happen. One, two. I don't think that anyone's going to be lighting, guiding up. So, and I don't see anything uh, laying down on him. So I think we're going to see a second game. And at that point, it's the Cubs game, I think. Yeah, right now, I mean, the White Sox came in, you know, the home team leading, having the better record on the year, but the Cubs come out more enthusiastic, I would say, wanting to win this game a lot more than the White Sox as that one gets by the catcher. Well, Baskin. I, I, I don't know if it's want to or when you got a when you got a hoss up here, it's like the old Kerry Wood, you know, from the Cubs mm -hmm. took it down. I mean... They're not hitting him today. He's just bigger, faster, and stronger than 99% of the kids out here. Go to a full count for Economides. He grounded to first base to end the second inning. And the full count pitch from Guyton. Just inside. It's going to be ball four. So Economides, he's going to get on base for his first time today. And that's going to be the fourth walk issued by Guyton. I think that's, did Baskin have a walk? Baskin had a walk, yes. So there's five walks in the game, is that what it is? It is, five walks in the game, yep. And none of them have gotten past second base. You know, it's a, at this level, it's all about walks and errors, you know. And the other thing is strikeouts, too, how critical it is. I mean, think about it in this game, there's only 21 outs in the whole game. So if 21 outs and you start giving them up in errors, you got to add that many back in errors. You gotta, you're giving that many away in strikeouts. People always try to, you know, equate it to real baseball. And unfortunately, little kids' baseball is not, you know, 162-game baseball. It's they're not the same thing, and parents can't figure that out. And, um, although there's some similarities, they're trying to play right now, 21-inning baseball, 21-out baseball. That's all their outs are. So there's a lot of small ball involved because at this level, at the end of the day, you're just trying to win this game. It's one game at a time for these teams, especially at this point in the championship game. The White Sox down five to nothing here. If the Cubs win this one, we will have a second game with the Cubs being in the loser's bracket. As Thomas Gillen shows up to bat, he shows bunt and fouls back to the backstop for strike one. Pretty lucky to have some of these uh, great alumni around here. You know, Todd Barnett, who we just heard from, who's, he was very, uh, very humble, but he literally was probably the best coach. Other than, you know, there's a David Rook out here took him to the Little League World Series. He had some great players. I'm not saying that uh, the Barnett's team didn't, but did he just hit him? As it looks like Byron Jeter is going to elect that that's going to be a strike call, as Gillenshaw was trying to argue that it hit him on the elbow. But... You know, at, at this level, the kids are not wrong. You know, well, you know, hopefully they're not. You know, hopefully they're being honest. 
gets better. Oh, wow. He's saying he swung, and that when you swing and it hits you, or you just, get, at least you open up, that is a strike. As he shakes his head in frustration, Gillenshaw believing he should be on first base, trying to argue with home plate umpire Byron Jeter. Jeter not going to let that go. 0-2 the count, runner on first base is Economides. So, like I was saying, though, you know, there, there's just been some great, some great coaches around here that have really done some really remarkable things. And you know, when at this level in the juniors, there's not a dad in the in the dugout. So, you know, a parent uh, can't claim what they call around here. Oh boy! So this one's ripped into left field. We're gonna see, but it is gonna be foul down that third base sideline. Yeah, you know, th there's always a big. Uh, big stigma out here they call it daddy ball and uh, at this level there's, there's not daddy ball these these coaches six on each side they don't have a dog in the hunt they're putting the best players out there interesting because I have I have heard that sentiment before of you know whatever coach's son does you know coach's son gets his way and everybody else kind of has to fall in line but at this level you're saying it's not it's not exactly quite that clear cut no, you know, I, uh, I, I think I've, I've, I've oh boy, it swings up yeah, I, I think Gillenshaw just kind of being frustrated after not getting that, not getting that hit on the elbow. He believes that should have been a hit by pitch and kind of a frustration swing there. Yeah, who's up next here? We got Owen Smith, the first baseman. No, 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 oh. 42. Um, Give me a second. far away it's hard to see anyway what what I was saying is, is that uh, Ben Pelop yeah, you're right uh, Ben Pelop you know it at this level you know it's it's kind of their first uh, taste of what athletics look like at the next level that you know it at Pee Wee, everyone has to have a minimum play. Mm -hmm. And the rest of these levels, every kid has to have a minimum play. And here the minimum play is very minimum. It's just the outfield, right? No, they just have to bat one time. Oh, okay, interesting. So everybody does have to come up and bat yep, that's at it. least once. Okay. Yeah, and uh, Torres, uh, in the other leagues, they have to play every other inning. So, And they bat all the way through. So it's kind of uh, more parity. And, the, and it's, you know, the there's... 200, there's 22 teams of 12 at Pee Wee. And by the time it gets here, you're talking about ha less than half. And, and this, oh wow. As that pitch gets by the catcher Baskin, no throw down and Economides is gonna get into second sliding safely. That's actually Parker Childs behind the plate. The reason that is, is, is that for Baskin to be able to pitch in the next game, He's only allowed to catch so much. So there's a lot of strategic moving around going on here. And it would be a lot easier if we could be closer to be able to see all those things. Yeah, the, the tough is just not being able to see the numbers. Um, and that was really close to being picked off there. And Camarda's jumping down third baseline thinking they got Economides sliding back into second there on that pickoff attempt. Yeah, that's getting a, a little heated over here now. You know, I, yeah, the issue is, is the sun comes right under this canopy here. I don't mean that um, kind of heated. I think that these kids <laughs> are uh, feeling the pressure, the socks, and they realize, oh no, we're going to another one. So, as I said, the great Ernie Banks, we're going too. Yeah, so Childs was at second. He went behind the plate. Now it's Van Oz over at second base. When I was young, the, every day on WGN, the Cubs were on. They had the great Ryan Sandberg, second. Sean Dunstan had a great outfielder named Andre Dawson, the Hawk. He was a big hitter. You know, a little fact I probably, probably didn't know, I don't think it was until like 1990, uh, someone can Google check me, but in the mid-90s, there'd never been a game played at Wrigley Field at night. Wow. Did you know that? I did not, no. Yeah, There's always daytime games. And uh, when you go to Wrigley, the most coveted seats are in the outfield. So uh, it's the oldest stadium. It was built by uh, 
Henry Rickett. I mean, no, no, no. no. Henry Zachary. The, the team is owned by the Rickett family. But Henry Zachary um, built what is Wrigley Field now in the middle of town. And uh, forever the Cubs were known as the lovable losers. But not the lovable losers today. <laughs> now they finally got one a couple years back. I think they stopped it. It was a 100-year drought at least. Yeah, what is it? Bartman who, they, the, who ruined the ball that was caught. Um, his name was Bartman, and he reached out and ruined the field, the, the catch. Uh -huh. And then a, a, some lovable Cub fan bought the ball for like a couple million dollars, and they destroyed the ball in like public display. Oh, like, wow. Yeah, it's, it's kind of <laughs> a great story. 3 1 the count to Owen Smith, runner on second. No, Pelop. It's Econ Economids, and yeah, you're right, Ben Pelop. Uh -oh. Economides, and Pelop going to get a walk for his first at bat of the game. No, Burrow's going, I, I, I don't, I mean, let him, let him go. If he thinks he's tired, then they would bring in Van Oss or Baskin. They're bringing Baskin. Baskin was over at short, and it looks like he's coming up and talking to coach burrow now I, I don't think he can come back into the game i think that's only, what they that's what they had said i think they can only bring him the the same pitcher back in one time uh unfortunately they change the rules out here a lot because uh they want it to end today yeah they, they, they don't want it to play till tomorrow so whereas at the majors level they'll let it play till tomorrow so there's a 7 30 game tonight the astros versus the red sox um, and it'll play tomorrow, man. It, 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 and there are people everywhere now. Um, over there on the miners' field, it's like the top of the fourth, and it's 2-2. Two -two. And um, so Guyton stays back on the mound. Yeah, I guess just giving him a breather there after that walk to Smith. Well, so what happens now? Or to Pelop, excuse me. I, I think we're back at the top of the lineup, yep. right? Kalino Lahan so leading off. Lahan, and I'm going to make a prediction. This ball's going to the wall. He had a single up the middle in the third. Big swing and miss there from Lahan for strike one. I bet you that ball reached 76, 77 miles an hour. And at major league distance, if you rear it back, it's probably 95 miles an hour. This kid's trying to try to hit it up. And these are these are the two studs, two best players on the team. There we go. That's so that a one. Ball. Yep, that one gets by Childs, and both runners advance. Pilaf to second. Economides in the third. Don't forget, we have to play seven. We have to play seven inning. So what we thought here a minute ago was kind of a cakewalk. Yeah. I think if he hits one hard it's going to score two and you're going to have five to three with one out yeah P pelop speed on second could be a factor here if the ball is hit up the middle and gets by into the outfield so that one gets up there close to his helmet boy and that ball's moving right there that's that's some serious chin music and um, you know as i just said before if there's a best player on the team, you're watching the two best go at it right now. Um, and there are uh, a ton of kids over here playing wall ball and tennis balls are flying all over the place. Happened on y'all's game as well, a couple of times. Well, these kids don't really care about this game. <laughs> they care about the wall ball. <laughs> wall ball is fun. It's a lot of fun. We used to play it a lot different. We, you know, Keep. Like you had to turn around and they throw it at your head. Keep you active. Uh, this one's right to the no. pitcher, Guyton, and he gets uh, Economides in the pickle, and that's two outs. And it looks like Lehon during the pickle between third and home went to second. It's going to be runners at second and third now, two outs. You know whose fault that was? That's a base coach. That was uh, Economides fault. No, no, that's for going a base on. coach. These are these are thirteen year old kids 
they got you know poison running through their brains right now. They're young. They need to be told what to do. And ball on second and third, you are not running unless that ball is scoring. You don't on a ball up to the pitcher right there. You hold. You make him throw the ball to first, and then you take off when you know he's throwing it. It's Swing that, and a miss there from Patrick two Fowler. Strikes, two outs, and they just took. They just put themselves back into a hole. Yeah, runners on second and third, one out. Now the same thing with two outs. It, it is a big difference, you know, not being able to score that runner from third on a on a fly ball or something like that. 0-2 oh, two now, two outs. Uh, Guyton's got a, a strong pitch, you know. To get out of this one without giving up a run after walking two be impressive you know unfortunately these coaches don't get paid they get a little emotional and uh that's what happens and so uh there's a lot of armchair quarterback parents right now requesting their uh their uh call there but they're out here doing this for free no one's getting paid and i always say uh if you want to complain why don't you volunteer as this one's hit to the left side, it's going to be the shortstop Baskin getting it thrown over to Ferber. How smooth is that kid? Yep. And no run scored off a couple of walks by the Cubs. We go to the top of the sixth inning. Cubs leading the White Sox 5-0.
Top, top of the sixth inning, Cubs leading the White Sox five to nothing. First hit by Henry Van Oz has popped up. Second baseman Dominguez back on it, and he catches that to record the first out of the inning. You know, um, I'm not saying they gave up, but they definitely don't think that uh, that they got a chance, or they would have kept Lahan in there. So they uh, here we here we are. Yeah, Lahan just threw one out. Gave up a, a triple to Guyton and then grounded out Childs. And it's back up to Braden Johansson on the mound for the White Sox. It's Eli Ferber in there batting for the Cubs. 0-1 the count. Um, so this one's fouled back to the backstop. Go, count goes to 0-2. Yeah, no, uh, you know, you we, know, we've got some great new families at Post Oak. We've got uh, the Sartells who just moved here and uh, from Birmingham. And, They've, uh, you know, along with the Crenshaws and some of these great families that come in here have really made a, just an impact. And just like this Joe Hansen kid right here, this is his first year at Post Oak. Um, given all he's got right now, it's not enough. Yeah, I pitched a lot of that game against the Braves a couple days ago, and now he sees himself on the mound here again. Yeah, you can, you can definitely tell his velocity's come down a lot. And, yep. These kids, they only got so many arrows in the quiver, you know? And, oh, yeah. Uh, I was a left-handed pitcher myself, and let me tell you, after an outing, I'd have that ice pack on, sitting on the couch for about an hour. Yeah. As Ferber goes down there on strike, swung at one in the dirt, two outs now. In the top of the sixth inning, Cubs still leading the White Sox 5-0. to zero. If the Cubs do end up pulling this one out, since they are coming from the loser's bracket, they are going to have a game two to be able to win the championship here for the Junior Post Oak Little League. This That's one's lined in the left field, got right by Lehan into Landers, getting it back in there. That was J.P. Whitley, who got his started for the Cubs here with two outs. Or excuse me, that's Haynes Camarda there with that line drive by Lehan. Two Camardas on the team. Yep, Haynes Camarda and Miles Camarda as Haynes sliding back in there now. Should be Charlie Bookmeyer up now They're for the Cubs. They're excited to see another game. Yes, yeah, we have a packed house out here at Post Oak Little League. Bookmeyer lines this one in the left field too. So Landers has to get this one back in. And back-to-back -back line drives for the Cubs with two outs, trying to get a rally going. Yeah, what I was saying is, is that these kids, they're, uh, they are kids. And so uh, their arms, it's, it doesn't say the same. It's, it's in Verlander up there. These kids' <laughs> arms wear down quickly. And the difference between velocity at pitch one versus pitch 80 is tremendous in decline. Now up to the plate, William Gibson. He swings at his first pitch and Chops it foul down the first base line. But yeah, you can definitely tell there is some fatigue being played in with Brayden Johansson there on the mound, throwing a full five innings at this point. Trying to get through this Cubs lineup and that gets by Fowler. Both runners are gonna advance on the play in Camarda and Bookmeyer. Runners at second and third, now two outs. You know, just because this little kid's baseball, two outs, one, two, the call here probably is a squeeze bunt. And swing and a miss. Not now. By but Gibson, but one, two, now the count. Yeah, but it was. We'll see if the prediction's right, there, right. Yeah. I would have done it there. Yeah. Kamar uh, is fast enough to get there. It's probably an unexpected thing. As that one goes down looking, Gibson strikes out. Runners on first and second. The White Sox get out of that one, but they still trail five. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. White Sox trailing the Cubs five to zero.
All right, we're back, uh, bottom of the six here, guiding back up on the mound. We're, we're uh, honored to be uh, accompanied by another great uh, Post Oak legend. I call him the hardest working man in Post Oak. Uh, Hunter Sage, he's a uh, two-time All-Star coach. I think he's coached about 13 teams out here. He was a co-coach with me. His son is uh, one of the best 11-year-old All-Stars. His son last year was on the team that lost in the last in extra innings that would have gone to state to Paraland. How far did Paraland make it? Uh, they lost in state to Needville, who uh, went on to Waco and got disqualified because of the COVID issue, but they were going to make a run all the way to the World Series. They were, weren't they? they got, that was a really bad thing. So uh, Hunter is uh, an expert at the game. He's on the board here. And uh, what's your opinion on this thing out here? Well, I think uh, we're going to be looking at a second game, and it's going to be uh, two uh, full-strength pitchers against each other. Uh, it's going to be a battle. So it'll be Baskin and Lahan. Yep. And so uh, Hunter has coached Wyatt, but Wyatt took a little time off. Give us your opinion and color on uh, Wyatt. Well, he took, uh, he took off a year and went down to the Dominican and kind of brushed up on his skills. And uh, he's back here in the States looking to play a lot of ball. And he's, uh, he's really improved his game. And we're going to see him in action here in about uh, 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, so t g give, us, uh, give us some color on the 11. Oh, there he, he hit some guidance. Uh, that, that hurts. Hansen. So t t tell us how the 11 is stacking up. So the 11. Probably the more decorated teams. We had Todd Barnett come and speak with us, and Todd, who I said has uh, his own philosophy of baseball, has been adopted around here. But your team, uh, the, you all coach, pretty special. Yeah, it is. It's uh, but it's always a challenge to get out of district. There's been some really special teams with lots of talent, and it's uh, beating beating the. Uh, Local guys here in district's a real challenge, but if you get through that and uh, that's a pass ball there, I, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even mess with that if I was right now. Yep, up up, uh, up five runs. Yeah, and they play seven, regardless, right? That is right. No no time limit, so they got one more inning. Okay, so uh, who's giving y'all troubles? Who beat y'all last year? Bel Air. Bel Air beat us twice. Uh, we came out of the winners bracket, and they beat us twice in a row in the finals. At Bel Air. At oh, Bel Air. And y'all play where this year? Back in Bel Air? Uh, I don't know. They hadn't announced it yet. I know the 12 year olds will be here at uh, Post Oak again, so it's always great to host and uh, big. Uh, not a coincidence that every host uh, won the district tournament at every level, 9, 10, 11, 12. So. And why do you think that is? I just think home field advantage. Been Boys been playing out there, some of them, you know, two, three, four years, and good crowd comes out to support, and just uh, that old home field advantage. We had a neat tradition today, about 2.30, they had a hat ceremony about uh, almost 40 kids. They were presented with a, a special hat, and they had a pin on there pin on their hat for every team they played on. And uh, some of these kids have been out here for eight seasons. You, you only have seven, you only have two seven year kids. No. I think that's right. Uh, two at, uh, what is it? Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13, 14, so. So who's the home team over there on the minors game? I think that's the Mighty Mighty Muscles. And the Mighty Muscles are coached by who? Uh, they are coached by Chris Hutchison, uh, who was a majors champion last year with the Pirates. And uh, I, was, I was a co-coach of the world champion Pirates. And Mr. Dotson. Mr. Dotson, first year post Oak coach, right? I believe that's right. Yeah, so uh, Hutchison could be back to back. A little bit. Another person, is there's another person here playing tonight, Shane Hildreth, who won Pee Wee. He, I, I claim we won the minors in 2020 with the uh, storm we were winning. And he has a chance to win all three divisions tonight. Yeah, that short in 2020 year, there's been a lot of talk of uh, teams claiming championships that were undefeated going into the COVID break. Uh, I claim three. Yep. Uh, so I won them all. I was coaching all three, so I won them all. I think uh, Coach Hutchison would challenge you on his uh, mighty Cavaliers of 2020. Um, he claims that uh, under his belt of many championships. But he wins rings. Hutchison wins rings. He does. Uh, Hildreth wins rings. Who's up to bat? Dominguez here? Looks like John Dominguez the fourth. Quattro, they call him. Man, how about how many people are out here? 
There are a lot. I had to park very far away. Um, I Ubered because I knew this was going to be happening. Like this. That's thinking ahead. Yeah, I mean, how many people you think are out here? Oh, BK up to bat. Um, at one point, you'd probably bunt this ball just to even get a run on the board. Right? When you bunt right here? I think I would. Get a one out. Yeah. They're going to try to jam them up at home. What's the pitch count on uh, Guyton? So the way it works is 95. So they, they can only pitch soft 30 to go to the next game. Hard 40 that can't catch. Same deal. But they can pitch 95 over two games. So I guess uh, you as the lawyer here made up a new rule. Yeah, we tried. You know, it's uh, <laughs> need to have a law degree to figure out the rules in Little League sometimes. Yeah, they're, they're very uh, unique. Very Byzantine. Yes. Um, and, w and what's really the primary difference in the rules between here and select? I think they do a little bit better job in Little League of uh, protecting the kids' arms. There, There's a, uh, a greater limitation on pitching. Um, so uh, what, what's your opinion? Uh, you come from a long line of great athletes. Your father is a great humanitarian and football player. And what's his opinion and your opinion on just the value of Little League Baseball versus going out to select baseball? You know, I mean, it's uh, used to be the only game in town, and now, of course, you can go out and play anywhere you want. But just the community aspect, and uh, especially if you return and live in this city, you end up playing with kids that uh, – you grow up with them, meet a bunch of kids from different schools, and uh, you know everybody goes off to college and comes back, and you still remember your buddy that was on your little league team when you were nine or ten, or the kid that you know caught that ball or dropped that ball, or uh, you know just talk to everybody around here, and they still to this day remember when they were 10, 11, 12 years old. So, uh, you know, I heard something pretty cool the other day from our mutual great friend Johnny Randolph, and he and he heard it from someone else. He said. You know, in select ball, if you don't win the game, you just sign up for another tournament the next week. But these kids are really getting pressure right now. This is real pressure. You, this is it. This is – they're not another tournament. They just don't move over. There, there really is pressure for some of these kids right here. That's right, and you don't get these crowds at uh, no, tournament heck, balls. No, you don't get these crowds. You definitely don't get the support. You don't get a bunch of girlfriends out here just – Chasing yep. these boys, I feel like what do they call them? Cleat chasers? Yeah, I think that's right. Cleat chasers. They got. Uh, I mean, there are. You know, hard to judge. I'd say there's a thousand people here at least. Oh, definitely. It ain't even started yet. You know the. What What do you think will have the most? Uh, Pee wee or majors? What What will have the most attendance? There is sure a lot of. People. Wow, look at him over there on the minors. That Hutchison just landed on him. Oh yep, yeah, he's uh. Seven two. Oh, uh, pass that's ball. Baltimore. Johansson scores. 5-1, two outs uh, in the sixth inning here. Uh, Lander's up to bat. I, I, I see it a tough time for this in this uh, Chi-Town rivalry and this Windy City rivalry for the uh, Southsiders to beat the uh, love of the Cubs. I think I think the Cubs are gonna. I think the Cubs have the advantage here. I mean, Baskin is gonna pitch well. Guyton is not gonna let up. I do, and the, the juniors division is the only division of Post Oak that features a double header uh, possibility in the championship. Uh, majors, it's the best of two, but if you lose on Saturday, you come back and play on Sunday. Has there ever been thought that they would play the do the same here? Uh, I hadn't heard that talked about, but it would be a. I think it'd be a great idea. Everybody's already up here, and yeah, I mean, you're, oh man, he's getting some, a little bit wild. I mean, I, I think this is probably one of the cooler scenes in Houston. I mean, they don't care right now. You can't buy a good seat. There's no, it's free for all. There's people here with all sorts of money, some really rich people and some really, you know, normal people. And they're just brought together by children playing baseball and there's nothing cooler. Yeah, and a cool thing to point out is 90% uh, of the people here don't have a son or a grandson or uh, daughter playing in any of these games are just out here to be with the that community is, and watch baseball. That is that is really really cool. And your 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 parents uh, have two kids, and uh, they they don't travel during the spring. They do not. <laughs> this is uh, just like my in-laws. 
when I when I first started dating my uh, wife a long time ago, they had houses and went on trips and all sorts of fun things. And now they don't go on trips and don't have houses, and they come and watch baseball. And he looked at me and said, "What's more fun?" That's right. And That's I, right. I think Mr. and Miss Sage think the same thing. That's right, and it's right down the street. Yeah, I mean, because you never know when it's going to end, you know. That's true. Golly, he throws it fast. How fast do you think this guy? 77? Uh, yeah, he's, he's topping out 77, 78. I mean, that, that ball is moving. All right. All right. Top of the seventh inning, Cubs leading the White Sox 5-1. to one. one run scored by the White Sox in the bottom of the sixth off a pass ball. Uh, Braden Johansson came in to score after he was hit by a pitch. Matthew Guyton finished off the inning three straight Ks, though, sending down Dominguez, Knowles, and Landers. Now it's going to be the Cubs. They're going to be led off by their leadoff hitter, Miles Camarda. 2-0 the count. Braden Johansson back on the mound for his sixth inning of work as he's been really good as this one's lined right to the first baseman, Smith. Smith goes down and grabs it right before the ball hits the dirt for out number one. Well, here we go. They got a big, uh, they got a big hole to come in out of there. Got to stop him here. And then uh, they got to hang six. Yep, and so far, one run through one hit through six innings for the White Sox. Their offense just hasn't been explosive like we've seen in the previous games this year. Where the pitching has been amazing. Yep, yep. Matthew Guyton on the mound has not given up a hit. The hit was actually given up uh, while Wyatt Baskin was on the mound. So Guyton with a no hitter is on the mound through six innings. As oh. this one's lined into left center field. The center fielder, Gillenshaw, getting over to it. And he's gonna get the second out of the inning. So one more out for the White Sox and they'll have a chance here to either tie the game or take the lead against the Cubs. If not, it will go to a game two because the Cubs in the loser's bracket. And these fans will get all they want. No. As Matthew Guyton Swing and a miss at the first pitch for strike one. You got to think Braden Johansson and Matthew Guyton both. These guys 
have seen each other all day. You got to think one of these guys is over 100 pitches at this point. They can only go 95. Yeah, swing and a miss there from Guyton for strike two. So it seems like they've been on the mound forever, but only neither of them have thrown 95 yet. I think we're getting real close. Yeah, especially with Guyton, I, I would assume. With all the strikeouts, I mean, there's been a lot of hitters that have taken him to full counts and hitters counts. and. I think Johansson has more up. The yeah, as that one's Matthew Guyton goes down looking for strike three. One, two, three inning for the Sox. We'll go the bottom of the seventh inning. Cubs leading the White Sox five to one. Here we go. Bottom of the seventh inning, Cubs leading the White Sox 5-1, to one, and this is the White Sox' last chance to score four more here, or they're going to be pushed to a game two as the Cubs are coming from the loser's bracket. And it's going to be the White Sox led off by Kyle Iconomides as 7-8-9 hitter. It only took me a week to figure it out, Brian. I appreciate it. Swing and a miss from Economides for strike one. Matthew Guyton on the mound for his sixth inning of work so far has given up no hits, no runs. If you look well, out here to the right. I guess he gave up a run with the hit by pitch to Johansson, but other than that, look at the, it's been look at the perfect. On the, on this oh, wow. Oh, shoot. Missed what just happened right there. I'm guessing it was a, it was a hit by pitch to Economides, and he's going to first base after that hit by pitch from Guyton. With a bruise, I promise you. I think he got hit in the head. He's a little shaken up there. Here we go. We got Looks like he's rubbing his he's rubbing his elbow there. We're going to have evidence on this. Wow. Look at this ball hit him in the face. I wish we could show you this picture. Oh, hit wow. Right in the C strap, right. That is why that these kids have these flaps out here. That is unbelievable. Yeah, literally hit right on that flap. If you see a, a regular helmet on and, and you always see the players with that 
little indention right there next to their mouth. Yep, and that it, it had it hit exactly on that strap right there. And coach is going to take a look at him here as he's a little shaken up. What is going on here? Are there, is the helmet cracked? The helmet cracked. I think the helmet is garbage. Oh, okay, so the helmet cracked, so he's got a new helmet. Looks like he's heading down to first base. Nope, that's going to be a courtesy runner. That's John Connor Light coming to run for him. Man, over here on the minors field, you have him all the way down the left field line. 7 2. Two outs, bottom of the six. You're about to see him erupt here. It's going to be a great scene. Yep. I got to experience it last year as a major. It was a neat deal. Pickoff attempt to Economides at first, or excuse me, light at first. He slides back in safely. Now up to bat, it's Thomas Gillenshaw. John Connor actually. Uh, Man on first is a uh, young cook in uh, training. His father, I just had to talk to his father. He is into cooking. He's also a great shot uh, with his shotgun. All the qualities you want to see in a young man. You cook a good meal, a bunch of ladies will come running to you, I'll tell you that much. You know how to cook. Lady cook. <laughs> it's one or the other. As Gillenshaw fouls one back for strike one. However, these days, why do you need to cook? You have Uber Eats, you know? DoorDash, so Uber easier, Eats, right? fast food. Nowadays, you don't even have to leave your house. No. This one's fouled back. I actually did a little bit of Uber Eats in college myself, driving around there. You did. Delivering all the food. Oh, yeah, back when it first started. This was before DoorDash kind of took over everything. And you think Uber Eats or DoorDash made some good money. I think DoorDash is the new um, it's the new king when it comes to delivering food. It's for sure. Uber sticks to delivering people. Here we go. 0 2 0 outs here. Guyton on the mound. He gave a little chin music to Gus. Yep, and this one's hit to the left side. That's Camarda over at third, who knocks it down, but it's going to be. That's an error. Yep, running it out safely is Thomas Gillenshaw. That's an error. That should have been a double play at this level. Yep. So the way they call errors at this level, uh, a lot of these parents are scoring these games on game changer. And, uh, it's pretty funny, you know, they to get one-sided when it's their kid up to bat they would call that a hit oh yeah and if it's their son fielding yep. you know they, they do it in, in, in but the rule is is that if a child could make the play that's that's the uh, kind of bar there so so that's good being heir to Camarda, and you can now see Guyton struggling with that command is it struggling or is it he feels pressure I think it's a little bit of both. I think it's a little bit of fatigue, maybe a little bit of pressure. Runner on first and second, no outs here. He does have a four-run lead, though, so I wouldn't feel too much pressure at this point. I think it's more of that arm starting to wear down on him. This one's hit right next to the Double first baseman, up. Ferber, and he did. What stepped on play. the bag. What a play. Big boy. Goes to his left. That's why you put a, that's why you put a big man. It's a right-hander. If it was a left-handed first baseman, he would have had to go across his body, but with Ferber being a right-hander, he just had to drop the glove down a little bit and step on the first base bag as Gillenshaw was just off the bag, just a little bit taking that lead and got doubled up there. So now, if you're guiding, you're feeling a lot better. Runner at second base, two outs. It is top of the order, though, in Lehan. Here comes a horse. So, look, what they, what they say, big players make big plays and big games. So, here's your chance, Lehan. You want to put pressure on him. Go lace one out there, turn it three to five, put a little pressure on him, and there is a winner over there. Great Chris Hutchison has just won back-to-back -back championships in minors and majors with two different kids. There's a mass onslaught. What a great scene. There's fireworks. Only a post so good to make stuff like that now. Up right to the field next to us, you see the confetti and the white smoke, the green smoke being shot off as they're celebrating 
a championship win over there as that one goes up to the head of Lahan. Lahan actually the only White Sox player so far to get a hit and it was against Wyatt Baskin back in the third inning. Other than that, Matthew Guyton has thrown a no hitter. The 2 0 pitch, and Lahan hits this one over to Camardo. Let's see if he can make up That's for the game. throw there, and that, that'll do it. Here we go. As the Cubs take game one. We'll see you back here in uh... this junior championship game. We'll give these players a little bit of time to warm up, but we will have game two here as the Cubs winning, coming out of the loser's bracket. They will have to face the White Sox again, though, if they want to take the championship. Final score in the game one, Cubs five, White Sox one. We'll be right back with game two coming up shortly. <laughs> 